Hey, good day people, it's Matt here from Matt Carve. So I'm going to show you how I made this dragon's eye. It uh, pops out like that. I actually carved this quite a few months ago and I didn't really show you how I made it and I'm not really going to show you how I made it then either because I have found a cheaper and easier way to make it. So let's get on with this video. I'm going to show you how to make the eye and also how to paint it. Okay, so why would you actually want to do an eye like this? So I kind of really like it because you've got sort of like the dullness of the wood, but you've got the really glossiness of that eye and it looks really sharp because it's sort of like sitting behind these lids as well. Um, what you've got to be aware of, if you're going to make something like this, is what you want to do and you're going to mold it into the back, you need it not to sort of like the, the hole that goes into it needs to be sort of like going down like that, like that. I'll show you, I'll just do a little picture here. So you've got the front, this is like a cross section. The hole needs to go like that. And so the eye will fit in sort of like that. And so then you can pull the eye out of that hole. Whereas if you've got any sort of like overhanging bits, maybe it goes like this. And then you mold the eye into there, that's the front. It's not going to work because when you go to pull it out, it's going to stop because of those bits hanging out. So just be aware of that. So when you make that piece there. Now, you don't have to have like um, putting it in from the back. You could have it like the skull uh, where it just pops in at the front. It's pretty cool. So you can just uh, quite easily just make a, a round a sphere and then just pop it in. This is how easy it is. You just like grab a blob of it. It's kind of like a bit funny. It's not like, it's not the best clay you could get. I think you can actually get some clays like Sculpty. I haven't used that. And that is oven dried clay. It's a bit more expensive. I'm just doing this with my fingers. Just trying to get rid of those cracks that are in there. Sort of see that crack maybe there. And so you can just sort of like get rid of it like that. So, okay, so yeah, so then we've got this in here. And we'll just sort of like try and that's the back. So we've got that at the front. So I'll sort of like put that in there like that. So I'm sort of like just maybe alter it a little bit, might make it a little bit flatter at the front. Try not to like press it too hard. You don't try to make it really smooth because what I do is when it's dry, I give it a little sand with some nice sandpaper. When I say nice, I mean like not like 100 grit. And you see the back. What I always do with molds and anything like that you can sort of see I have put a pen mark there. Now I'm gonna just I'll just scribe in an arrow so I know which way it goes up. So then I really lightly take it out. Now you don't want to sort of like manipulate it very much here because otherwise you're gonna change the shape of it. So then you just leave it to air dry somewhere. So after about 48 hours, I give it a light sand. It's quite hard now and I'm using 240 grit there. You could use it a little bit higher or a little bit lower if you wanted to, but 240 grit is, is about right. So okay, so essentially we have sanded them now. So they're quite nice and smooth. Like they're not perfect, but they're pretty good. And we'll just have a look at one of them to show you. So there you go. Okay, so the next step is to put some primer paint on. Now, if you don't have primer paint, you probably could just use white paint. If you don't have white paint, you could probably just go straight to painting the eyeball. So what I'm using is gesso, which painters use to prime canvases with. It's quite expensive and you don't essentially need it. Okay, so try not to put in the details of the eye without referencing it within the carving because it's just not going to look right so what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get the right line where that dragon's pupil is going to go now I'm putting on a base coat of uh, 
it's sort of a Payne's black I would have used just complete black if I had some but this is pretty close to being black and that one I'm going to do completely black and I'm gonna do sort of like a reptile eye kind of so I'm just gonna put in where the pencil markers where the eye is gonna go where that little pupil thing is gonna go so it's essentially it's like a pointed oval I guess that's what you call it so now I know exactly where I want it in relation to the carving okay so I'm building up the colors now now I've used a sort of like a base of gold and putting on that quite thick with quite a big brush I've only used like two brushes in this video that brush there and a really small brush to put in the fine details at the end so what I find is you might want to water down your paint because it'll sort of uh, go onto the eye a little bit easier you don't want to have it too thick that it sort of leaves a texture you want to try and not to put too much texture on the eye so thin it down a little bit and I'm sort of doing different color combinations here you don't want to use too many different colors but sort of just keep it to kind of minimum maybe three or four different colors and white and black as well white for the highlights and black for giving it depth I guess you would say and I like that base coat of gold because it's kind of it's kind of like a, a little bit glittery and you can see here I am going to a small brush and I'm just putting in more details now you don't want to sort of like paint wet on wet you want to go dry on dry you can paint wet on wet if you're an expert but sometimes it will end up a little bit muddy when the colors all start mixing in together uh, if you make a mistake just use your finger and wipe it off you can see there I just kind of wipe that end off because it kind of looked a little bit man-made I guess you would say now I'm going in with black and black what black does is it gives a depth so you want to kind of think that middle bit is sort of dark and sort of like mysteriously deep whereas sort of those little lines going out that offers it a little bit more depth as well and it also makes the colors pop also I think with painting is you got to understand like close up like this it doesn't look that great it's when you look at it sort of like a little bit further back it's going to look really good and also once I've put the varnish on that's even going to look better so I'm going in just sort of putting in final details here on this eye and I just want to put in a little few little highlights close to that dark area just to make it pop a little bit more so I'm using I think it's like a white and just sort of like you know just just sort of like really getting into the fine details now and it's these fine details that really make paintings that sort of like bring it from sort of like blah to sort of like yeah that looks awesome so I'm not saying this looks amazing but I'm, I'm pretty happy with it and once you put that varnish on it is gonna look really cool and I find like if you were it is quite hard using a really small brush so what I tend to do sometimes is I'll put my hands on the table and sort of like stabilize one hand with the other I do find my hands a little bit shaky these days <laughs> okay so what you can do as well is bring that black towards the eye that sort of helps sometimes sort of like a, it's like a vignette that sort of like darkens the outside so the middle kind of pops a little bit more always sort of put it back into the carving and see what needs work that really helps okay so this was quite a nice color combination that I was using this was just green and yellow and gold and black and some white for highlights so we're finished those two on the left that one on the right is the final well the one that I did before and you can see how shiny it is so what we're going to do now is put a varnish on 
I'm using a urethane acrylic which is quite expensive and it's quite smelly and stinky but it is really good and I use it for other things uh, like my jewelry so that's why I have it so I wouldn't probably go out and buy it just to do an eyeball but what the most important thing is is that you use a gloss varnish because you want that kind of wet look and I would recommend also putting on a few layers that will build up sort of that kind of wetter look of it. That one has two layers on, but that varnish is quite thick and gooey. 